Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and wow do I have a weird one in the world of game development today. Uh, the game engine behind one of the most popular games on Steam was just open sourced and literally nothing was said about it. I've been looking for almost a week now, there has not been an official announcement from the company open sourcing it, which is just so strange. But anyways, the game in question is War Thunder. Uh, this is an MMO style game where you can some pre-World War II up to modern day combat. You've got, um, you know, fighter jets, airplanes. Uh, tanks and ships. I never really played War Thunder much. I'm a World of Tanks guy, and it's kind of when you start with one and you try to move to the other. It's a really confusing thing. Uh, but I can tell you from experience with World of Tanks, these kind of games are ultra addictive. So War Thunder uh, is a very popular game. As I mentioned on Steam, you want to know how popular it is? It is the ninth most played game right now. So above Baldur's Gate, Team Fortress, Call of Duty, uh, Rust, uh, yeah, so it is top 10 most played games. Uh, current players right now, you have 100,000 people playing it on Steam at this point in time. That's, that's War of Thunder for you folks. I'm not exaggerating. This is literally one of the most popular games on Steam. And on top of that, it is on Xbox, on PlayStation 4, on PlayStation 5, on uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, so on. Uh, and you can also download it directly. So this has no bearing on the total player count. There are a lot of people playing War Thunder. Now, War Thunder comes from a company called Gaijin or Gaijin uh, Entertainment. Uh, Gaijin or Gaijin is the Japanese word for foreigner, I believe. Uh, and these are the games they make. Uh, so, uh, War Thunder, Cross Cut, Star Conflict, Enlisted, uh, Cursed Road, and a few others. There was one called X-Blade, which was one of the very first games made with the Dagger Engine. So this is a battle-tested game engine. Truth of the matter is, though, most people have probably only ever heard of War Thunder, but it can be used to make a wide variety of genres of games. And you're going to see here, they're still hiring people. They're still working on this engine. So it's not like they just abandoned it and dumped it into the public domain. This whole thing is just so confusing. Now, there is some suggestion that this is because um, Gaijin is uh, or was a Russian company. They're now based out of Budapest, that this is a way that they can let uh, other Russian game developers use the engine, but that is all entirely speculation at this point. Absolutely no idea why this has happened, and there's no news about it. That's the part that kills me. If I go back here, and we look at their news section, and we see more, you will find literally no announcements that they open source their game engine. Literally nothing. So again, Gaijin founded back in uh, 2002 in Russia, moved to Budapest in 2015. Uh, they got employees and offices all around the world. So Germany, Cyprus, Hungary, Latvia, UAE, Armenia are the six major offices that they've got. Ironically enough, Gaijin Entertainment actually generates 2.6% of all of Hungary's software industry profits, uh, which is kind of funny. Again, their big thing is the War Thunder game. Now, you've probably heard of War Thunder because it keeps going up in the news where, like, someone will uh, leak classified documents to prove that uh, uh, War Thunder's modeling is wrong or whatever. It's got a very zealous community behind it. But here we go. This is the Dagger Engine. It is available up on GitHub. I would have guessed that this was a leak of the engine, except for it's under Gaijin Entertainment's actual GitHub repository here. Um, there, you can see we got a couple of other things here. Now, interestingly enough, uh, they do have two scripting languages. I believe these were forked out into their own projects. I'm not sure that these were all here all along. Uh, but you can see here they make DOS script and then Quirrell. Now, Quirrell is based off of Lua uh, and kind of inspired by a couple of other scripting languages, but it is included in here as well, uh, as we'll see when we jump through the source code base in just a second. Now, the interesting thing you'd wonder is, okay, well, if this is under a useless license, well, what's the point of this? Um, it's not. It's under the BSD3 clause license. Uh, that means other game engines could rip parts out of here and use it in their own engine. They'd have to keep the license in place, but um, yeah, there's nothing preventing. It's a very liberal license in what you can do. So if you want to use the War Thunder engine, the Dagger engine, in your own project commercially, you can. There is no requirements here at all. Now, when this was first released, and it's why I haven't covered it immediately. First off, I haven't found any evidence of like why it was released yet. I've been waiting for that, and that's doesn't seem to be coming, but this wasn't here fully. So now you have build instructions for how to get it up and going. And more importantly, you actually have these releases here. Uh, so you can actually download uh, a couple of the pre-built source code and a couple of the demos. Uh, so for example, one of the samples, we'll go and check that out. So you go down here, samples, we've got pre-built ones for like a physics test, a sky sample for uh, volumetric skies. And this one is a real-time global illumination example. And we'll come back to the source code for this in just a sec, but I'll go ahead and run it so you get an idea of what we're dealing with. So it is the classic Sponza level. It's here, and it's showing the real-time lighting. 
uh, in the Dagger Engine. Now, the good thing about this example is it's more of a minimalist example. So it will show you how to create your own app from scratch using the Dagger Engine. So this is where you're gonna wanna start if you wanna learn more about the Dagger Engine, because quite frankly, uh, it is, um, it's all you got. There's no documentation in here other than this quick build instructions here, but they have the binaries available also for their tooling as well. Uh, so that is pretty nice there. If you want to get up and going, there are those samples there and we do have all the source code for those samples. So if you jump through the source code, um, again, it's undocumented. You can come in here, you can see here are all the uh, third party libraries that it's currently dependent on. Uh, so it gives you an idea of some of the things that it works with. So it's using FSR, for example, image GUI. Interestingly enough, it's using things like um, asset importer. Assimp is in here as well. Uh, uh, physics wise, this also is very interesting. So we go into their physics collection, you're gonna see they're actually using bullet and then jolt physics. Jolt is an interesting one. I'm gonna follow up later on. Now these were in the open source repository. I think they also use physics in their own, uh, but that's a commercial uh, license. So I imagine that's why it hasn't necessarily been uh, included here, but it does have um, bullet and jolt implementations for its physics as well. Uh, the language, as I mentioned earlier on, there is the Quirrell language. Uh, and if you scroll on down here, you get a bit of an overview of what Quirrell is all about. So it's based on Squirrel, inspired by Python, uh, JavaScript, and especially Lua. This is their gameplay logic programming language inside. So if you're interested in checking that out, I know a lot of people really like um, the programming languages generally. So if you're interested, all of the details are here, including some of the, uh, uh, the story behind it. Uh, in this documentation here as well within the, the, so this is in the first party libraries under Quirrell. You'll also find the other one here, DOScript is in there as well. Uh, so you got another scripting language. So there's actually two scripting languages powering this engine. A little bit of details about DOScript here as well. Uh, and then on top of that, where you're gonna really wanna start off, if you're trying to figure out how to use this guy, uh, it's the samples you're gonna wanna dig into. So go into samples, uh, for example, that test global uh, illumination one I showed you earlier on is available right here. So go to test GI. Uh, uh, and then your code is, it's actually not that hard to follow. It's funny, this code is very 2000 C++. There's multiple inheritance and stuff like that. Things I haven't seen that much in recent code bases, but it's pretty clean and easy to get into. So this is your entry point, uh, main right here. So here is their wrapper of main and everything goes in here. You're just basically doing some simple system setup stuff. You're doing some, um, old fashioned if defs for various different platform handling here. Uh, and then the, the key thing of all of this though, uh, is there is this init call. Let's find it, it's near the bottom, there we go. So here's the key guy right there, game demo init. So that's where, uh, that's where you're gonna be the jumping off point. You'll find that guy is defined as an extern available right here because it is over here in testapp.cpp. In fact, it's at the very bottom of this. So this is where your game basically, this is the game logic. So you come down here at the very, very bottom and you're gonna find game demo and nip. And this is gonna walk through the process of actually setting up your game, loading your level and so on. So loading resources in place. This is various different setup pieces here, but the key thing is you're gonna notice at the end, this Dagor select game scene, new demo game scene. And the demo game scene is actually defined uh, in this project. There we go. So demo game scene is defined all the way throughout this class. And that's how all the various different logic pieces are set up. So if you wanna really kind of grok how this code works, what you're gonna do is basically dissect this class. And all of this code here you see is to set up that global illumination sample that loaded in, um, you know, that spawns a demo level. You're also gonna find if you come in here, uh, you do have a variety of different shaders available. So go into the, the source, you got various different shaders all here. So if you HLSL shaders for doing certain things. Uh, we got the Sponza shader over here. So all of their shaders are provided as well. Uh, yeah, so do keep in mind in all of this, you're not getting War Thunder's source code. This is the game engine for War Thunder Dagger Engine. Completely open source under the BSD3 license. I have no idea why. Again, there's speculation that this is so that uh, other companies that are currently under sanction can go ahead and use it, but that's it. That's speculation. There is no word. It's just the reason why that's speculated, and I can't confirm this myself because I'm not on Telegram or wherever this is being said, but there's a company called VK Group, 
that announced apparently that they were working with this engine. But I, I didn't find that myself. That is all coming from uh, Hacker News on Y Combinator. So I'm not sure that this is the reasoning. Uh, but yeah, War Thunder's code is out there. BSD3 source code license. Again, one of the top 10 most popular games on Steam just had its game engine released with literally zero press about it. Very strange. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.